Cinemas now. A hunt for Daniel Jones. The greatest western ever made. Daniel Jones wanted NFL quarterback. Alright everyone, this is Tim with Online Pig Blue. We'll bring you the best in New York Giants sports talk entertainment. We're having a little fun on Tuesday. Why? Why not? It's Tuesday. You gotta lighten your life up a little bit on Tuesday. Daniel Jones, the news came down from Mount Olympus. Olympus. Can't talk today. It's early. Joe Judge and Zeus have decreed Daniel Jones shall start on Sunday against the New England Patriots. I think I'm going to be there. Will I stream the first half again? I don't know. I got in a lot of trouble last time for doing that. We'll have to wait and see. But let's talk about this. We finally got the news I think most Giant fans were looking for. Daniel Jones, the starter. What should we expect? What should we look for? Well, you know what? I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, this, and I've said this a million times, it's preseason. I, I take more stock in preseason games than I do in practice. And I find it interesting that last year, everyone's excuse for Daniel Jones, including Joe Judge, Dave Gentleman, John Mara, certain number of fans, that Daniel Jones did not have any preseason games last year. None whatsoever. And that stunted his growth because he was, he, we had the COVID protocols. We had, we had learning of a new system that stunted his growth. Okay. Now we got preseason games. We are going into game number trace. And Daniel Jones is yet to play. Big Ben's played. Big Ben. 497-year-old Big Ben has played. The GOAT has played. 9,470-year-old GOAT. That's a really old GOAT. He played. Okay, so, okay, well, we're not going to get into why Daniel Jones hasn't played, but these guys have played because I think certain coaches understand the nuances of preseason and how that helps build a continuity and an open relationship with your offensive line and your weapons. Now, you may not play your weapons because a lot of our guys are hurt still. We don't, know what's, we don't know what's going on with Kenny. Tony can't even get on the field. Sterling's evidently looked good in practice. But what are we expected to see from Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones. Well, I hope, you know, they're more likely they're going to not play uh, all their weapons. I mean, I think Sterling will probably play. I think Evan will play to give him a comfort level. I think they will start the majority of their offensive line. Jones is supposed to play the first half and maybe even to the third quarter. I think that what we just need to, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you statistically I'm looking for something in particular. The only thing in particular that I'm looking for statistically is no turnovers. I would like to see a greater feel for a pocket presence. I would like to see the ability to move in the pocket. I would like to see some semblance of blindside awareness. I would like to see him have the ability to potentially read through some progressions Look at his first, look at his second, look at his third, go back to his first. All while keeping his eyes downfield, moving in the pocket and sensing the pressure. Now, these are all things that a third year quarterback who was supposed to, who was taken sixth overall and who potentially should be our Messiah, our quarterback Messiah, should be able to do in year three. The only problem is we don't know because we've never seen him on the field. Now, I'm not sitting here. I'm not questioning the coaching staff for not playing him. Well, I actually am questioning the coaching staff. I'm allowed to question the coaching staff. <laughs> People are like, you're, you're questioning professionals. Yeah, I'm allowed to. I'm a stupid idiot on YouTube. I'm allowed to do whatever the hell I want. I, I, and I know some people find that offensive. But, you know, that's what you get to do on YouTube. You get to have, you get to have an opinion. It's, it's, all, it's all good. Opinions are okay. Everyone can have one. Everyone can have a different one. But all I'm saying is the fact that we have to see something from our quarterback. You know, and I know I, I, I've, I've, I've questioned the great Joe Judge. How dare you question Joe Judge? Oh, I have. I'm questioning it. Because like I said, you can't use an excuse for an entire offseason that your quarterback did not have the ability to have preseason, which helped, which was going to help them greatly in year two, and then have preseason and then not play him. And then say, well, we've seen enough in practice. Well, you saw him in practice too last year. Then they're going to say, well, it, we, we scrimmaged against the Browns, and that, that gave us everything we needed to know. Most of that was one-on-one matchups. 
that you really are going to get the nuances from. It's the one-on-one matchups, your wide receiver matchups, your defensive back matchups, you know, your, your offensive line against their defensive line. It's just, it's just, you know, that that's what you're going to get. What you're going to get out of that. You're not going to get a full idea of what your quarterback can do. And then the people put on with Baker Mayfield. Well, Baker Mayfield's had a better career than Daniel Jones. Baker Mayfield has a winning record. Baker Mayfield's beaten winning teams. Tom Brady has nine thousand four hundred sixty eight Super Bowl rings, and he still went to pre. He's still playing in preseason because Tom Brady understands you need to get your timing down. You need to work with your offensive line. You need to get the feel for what you have. So I'm just looking for Daniel Jones. Like I said, I am not looking for anything statistically. I'm not going to say I want him to have 14 out of 15 passes for 250 yards and three touchdowns and no interceptions. If he is nine out of 18, shows the ability to go through his progressions and shows the ability to have some semblance of pocket presence, and not look flustered when the play breaks down, his first option is not available, I will be happy with that. It's plain and simple. I'd be be happy with that. That would show me some type of progression from year year two to year three. Because all the people out there who do not think this is Daniel Jones' make-or-break season, if you don't think that, you've got blinders on. You really do. So let's, you know, let's... Let's let's just see what let's just see what happens. Like I said, let's not go for all the Daniel Jones lovers. If he goes, you know, if he has a wonderful game, you know, take take it, take it with a grain of salt. Take it easy. All the Daniel Jones haters. If he has a terrible game again, take it easy. Take it with a grain of salt. Let's just see. Let's just get a better understanding of what's happening. Also, I want to talk about quickly the uh, cut down days today. We're only going down. We're only cutting five today. So, I mean, it's not like we're uh, it's not like we're really just, you know, not like we're whacking a bunch of guys today. So we're only we're only cutting five. Um, some people, like I said, I, I, did, I mentioned some people yesterday, and I and I think that you know it really stands out. You know, people that I think are that are probably on the rise. I've said it before, Matt Cole. I enjoyed watching. I played twenty snaps, I believe, on the defensive secondary. Good special teams guy. Can also be a receiver. I think he played five snaps. Oh no, I think he played. Uh, he played twenty snaps total. He played a bunch on the defense. He played nine snaps. On defense, five on offense, and the rest on special teams. He, he's 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 a good looking kid. He's a good looking. He made you know he collected two tackles. He added a fifteen yard kickoff return in the third quarter. Not not the greatest thing in the world, but you know what? He's got um, he's got some steadiness to him, and, and I liked his versatility. Cam Brown, like I said, he didn't play a snap against the Jets, but he played. I think he played fairly well. I've said that in my last video. Um, I think he did ten snaps on defense, and then he played on special teams. Finished with a total of three tackles. I think he could be a good special teams guy and, you know, fill in linebacker at 6'5", 223 pounds. I, I think he's got a unique individual skill set, so we'll see where that happens. Devontae Booker solidified himself as a second running back. I'm still not I'm still not thinking that's going to be the greatest thing in the world, but, you know, it is what it is. Hopefully, um, hopefully we get something going on. Hopefully we get something Lowerkian. Brian Lowerkian. Yeah, Brian Lowerkian looked good. I think he looked better than Mike Glenn. Does that mean anything? No. Guys that I think are still on the bubble. Yeah. Oh, Shane, can you see? Oh, Shane Zimenez. Everyone's going to talk about the sack. Everyone's going to talk about the sack. And he made a play in the red zone on a running down on a scrambling quarterback. And he got credit for a sack on that play. It was more of a covered sack. As a pass rusher, I think he's showing some promises. He had three quarterback hits and a sack. But holding and setting the edge against a run. And I'm going to, I've been screaming this for. I don't know, since, since, since the off season, he looked horrid. He does not look like he's capable of doing that or capable of being of every down player. He's, he's got to be in some ways considered on the bubble. He's had four and a half sacks in what, two seasons now. And of course I know he was injured last year, but you can't set the edge against the run. Oh my God. Left tackle, right, left tackle, right tackle. I mean, oh, oh God, it was terrible. Watch the first two, two series, watch the first series. They burned us off tackle, right off tackle, left. Same plays. We couldn't set the edge. Any of our defensive ends could not set the edge against the run. Sam Beal, can we just cut him now? Please. He didn't look good. Get rid of him. Get rid of him. Just 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 whack him now. And I and and Madre Harper now has the groin injury. He had some serious you know what people are gonna say? He looked good. No, he had some really serious struggle struggles against the Browns last week. 
he started making his most of his snaps later on in the game. He did yield that 14 yard reception on the third and third and 13 late in the second quarter. He's he's just he you know he just gives up still too much space between him and the receiver. He doesn't get physical enough as you would like to see, and he lacks consistency, anticipation, and situational awareness. But beyond that, let's keep him. But like I said, we're only cutting down five today. We'll do a video later today once cut downs to happen. Uh, again, like I said, guys, let's let's not go crazy about Daniel Jones. If he's if he plays well, it is what it is. If he plays horrid, it is what it is. Let's just wait till the regular season starts. And again, this is Tim of the Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talking entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you subscribe, bring the play thing in the means of that. Yeah, so.